All right, so I'm going to be talking today about the Constructs Fisher Price Power Pack. This is the Power Pack, and this is the motor. Um, I had gotten these at a secondhand store, kind of a thrift store. This is working, but when I initially got it, it was not. I also have a second Power Pack that is not completely working, and I'm going to kind of sh walk through like how you might uh, try to fix it if you have one that's not working correctly. So there's two ways to operate it, and I have. Uh, this guy in here just to show you the movement more clearly. So you can just simply press the button and he's going counterclockwise. Press the button, he's going clockwise. The other way to do it, and this is to, instead of just pushing it and having momentary movement to keep it moving, there's almost like a little lever there. And so you can push it down and kind of get it stuck underneath there. And that way it'll keep moving until you release it. Same thing over here. You don't press both buttons at the same time. Like I think you're somewhat tempted to do that when I first got it and didn't have the directions. I thought you might have to do both. So let me just quickly go through the basics first about putting in the batteries. Um, you got to pull these two tabs back, pull it out, put the batteries in. So this is actually the one that's not working, as you're going to see in a minute. This is the one I showed you before that is working. This is the second one I happen to get that's not. So as long as you put in the batteries opposite direction so do not put them like that but as long as you put them like this you, you can actually flip them the opposite direction and it'll still be okay so that's not super important uh, close it up obviously and this kind of lines up with this at the top you have where this goes and on the motor, you have this. So you're going to see here now how this does not work as well. So if I push this, that's fine. If it even sticks, that's fine. But the other motion does not work at all going to talk about a couple of things that you would test in the first place because you might uh, have this put some batteries in here see if it works and it doesn't work and there's really three different places where there could be a problem it could be with the motor itself the the, the little motor inside could get frozen it could be that the wire is got has a break in it or very likely the the power pack has an issue so I'm going to quickly walk through those three different things the scenario that I'm suggesting here is you bring this home and it doesn't work at all and you do not know where the problem is so the first thing you want to do is check the motor so i have here uh, a battery pack and i've attached some alligator clips to it just to make it a little easier to do some of these things you might say well why am i using uh, AA batteries it's supposed to use the c batteries for the purposes of testing it doesn't matter okay like again i'm, I'm not going to actually use this to make a car move or anything so for the moment this is going to put out three volts and what I'm supposed to use puts out three volts, so it doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have two good batteries. Don't have half-used batteries, because that might be the problem. And what I'm going to do is, this is where that wire attaches. And I'm going to touch the two metal things. And so there it goes kind of clockwise. I'm going to turn it, switch it, and it's going counterclockwise. So the point is, the motor itself is working. So what would happen if you hooked up a good battery and nothing moved? Sometimes with these things, they haven't been used in 20, 30 years. Um, and the, the motor might freeze. Sometimes you can spin the, like the, uh, whatever this is, and get it moving. But this one is rigged in such a way that you can't. Do not force it. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to remove two screws. One, two and carefully pop off the top. And what I would typically recommend you do is pull the gears out very carefully. Take a picture for yourself so you remember how they go back. But there's one, and here's the second, okay? So now what you can do is you can literally take this out of here and you can just spin it. And sometimes it'll generally spin, like it generally won't be so frozen that it can't spin, but sometimes that'll help. So what I would do here is after I spun it a couple times back and forth, hopefully freeing it up, 
is now use the alligator clips and hook it right to the motor itself. Okay. And this, um, again, this motor is going to spin. So you got to just imagine that it was frozen. But you can see, I get something. There's been times I've actually hooked them up and it didn't spin and I would spin it a couple times until finally it actually got going. So that's one way to free it up. Once it's working there, you still want to check to make sure that these wires going from here to here and from the blue one to there are working. So then you would, again, kind of go back and go to there. And they are working, right? So at this point, if, I, if you've gotten that motor working, that's a good sign. So you know the motor's good and you're going to put stuff back together. Watch the wires. See how that is there? So don't let it be on top of this piece because it'll pinch. And even before you screw it in back together, you could always kind of make sure you didn't screw something up. There, it spins one way, it spins the other way. So now that's good to go. Now I want to check the wire. So I'm going to plug this in and the alligator clips will again come in useful here. And it's spinning. If I really want to go crazy, I can do it the opposite way. The point is now I know I have a good motor and that there's no breaks in the wire. I hooked it up to the battery box. And so now if something doesn't work, so that is working, but again, this one is not, I know there's something going on here. Some connection within the battery box is, is not working correctly. So now I got to take this apart. So now we know the issue is somewhere in here, somewhere the power is not getting to here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is look for obvious corrosion. Probably everybody's seen a battery, uh, you know, battery box that batteries leaked and there's all sorts of corrosion. If that's the case, you want to get as much of that corrosion off as possible. Do it in a safe way. Those are some nasty, you know, acids and chemicals. So do it outside, do it over a bag and throw the stuff out. Um, I've used small little files at times. Uh, to scratch things off. I got this at like a, I don't know, like a, I forget where I got this, like a Harbor Tools kind of stuff. And I've actually scratched things up to get corrosion off. You can use, I mean, people use like Coca-Cola and I think it's like baking soda and stuff to try to get some of the corrosion off. The, the next thing you're going to have to do is figure out, well, where is the problem? So what we're going to use is a multimeter to see exactly what's going on here because in this one there's no particular uh, corrosion, okay? So we'll use a multimeter. I'm not an engineer. I don't know 90% of this. I know how to check how many volts something has. You know, has a battery got full voltage or not? And about the only other thing I need to do, know the continuity setting. And I use this on a regular basis. Um, basically, continuity is, is power being conducted. So if you watch the numbers and I touch the two leads, it goes like that. So if I put, if I have a piece of plastic and I put it across the piece of plastic, nothing will happen because power cannot be conducted across plastic. But if I do it on this screwdriver, you'll see that it is being conducted, okay? So the way that that's useful is we can look at this and say, well, what's going on here? There's a metal piece that goes here, down, and back to here. And you gotta remember that the batteries are in here like this. And so basically that's just connecting these to make, instead of 1.5 volts, three volts. So the first thing I'm going to do is see, am I getting, is it conducting from here to here? So I'm pressing against both, and you can see it's all good. Okay, so that piece is clean. That's working. Um, I'm going to look at this, which goes from here to here. So I'm going to put this here, and I'll start moving this along. And you can see that, yep, it's conducting. So that piece is good. There's another piece that goes from here down into here. So same thing. I'm going to from here to here. And yeah, that's good. Okay. Here's this where the output is. And I'm going to, about the furthest I can go is here. 
That's good. So from here to here, that's good. So if any of these were not good, I'd know there was corrosion or something else in that piece that I had to take care of. But so far you can see like, well, uh, everything seems good. It should be working. But there's some things we haven't tested yet. We haven't tested whether the power can get from here to the outputs once the button is pressed. Because once the button is pressed, this will get pushed up against this and conduct the power from this part of the battery to the to this or to this. So we got to check that out. So I'm going to want to pull in a battery or an alligator clip for this. And I'm going to, it doesn't actually matter, but I'm going to put red to red. And I'm going to put this to here. Okay, so now I got one side going to here. Now I know already that if I connect it to here, it's all good. So I'm going to put it in this, in the outlet thing here. And I'm not surprised it doesn't work, but I'm basically now going to press this button. Okay, and when I press the button, you can see it goes because that, so that means that's working. So power's going from here to the output. So that's good. What about this one? Same thing. So this is actually, uh, that's got a funny reading there. There we go. So that's going well. So we've just about eliminated everything except going from here to here and here. And it's going to be hard to see because what happens is it goes underneath this strip and in a resting state goes to here or here. So if you see, if I just put this in here without even pressing a button, the number goes down so the power's getting there. But here, it is not. Okay, no matter where I touch it here, so that's where the problem is. And that seems confusing because that's not the switch that's not working. Um, again, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but we're going to, so I can't 100% explain to you what the problem with the circuit is, but um, that, you know, it's not, it's definitely not working right. It's not conducting. So we got to somehow clean that, and that's going to be problematic because of how hard it is to access. There must be some sort of corrosion or some other kind of wear going on in there that's uh, preventing the the current to get through. It's unfortunately in the most inaccessible place because what you have is you have this bottom, this very bottom one, this in the middle, and this on top. Now there's been times I had, in the last one that I already had fixed, where when I pressed the button, it did not, the power didn't go from here to here. And I was able to clean that with a piece of sandpaper. So I took a strip of sandpaper, cut off a very small piece. And what I've done with that small piece of sandpaper is put it underneath here. So it's in between. And I then press the button and then pull it out. And I've done that a couple of different times. The reason I press the button is because if otherwise if I do it, it's just super loose. But if I press the button and then pull it, I'm actually getting some stuff off. And I can also trip flip it and do the other side. So you would do that if when you checked the, cur the current, it wasn't going from here to here when the button was pressed. Okay? That would clean that up. But that's not the case here. And obviously you can do the exact same thing on this side, right? So if, if that was your problem and you cleaned it up with a little piece of sandpaper, you may be good to go at that point. But I cannot, I tried, I could not get the sandpaper between this and the bottom layer. And so now we got a problem. So now I gotta bring out the big guns. The reason I'm bringing such a big, big tool out for such a small job is because this this strip which is covering the one that's a problem is held in place by these two plastic rivets that were probably almost certainly kind of almost melted into place to cover those and so I can't unscrew it and release those so I got to get rid of them and so the way that I'm going to choose to do it is by drilling them out um, so essentially what I'm going to do is put this down and drill those things out and that way that that piece that's holding them in place will let me 
pull that out. So what I'm going to do is put it right on top in the middle. So you can see, let's see, there we go. So now that part is released. So I gotta do the same thing with this one. You can see I'm kinda going slow, right? Uh, I don't wanna drill the metal itself. So that should now come up. Yeah, there we go. So I can now lift that piece out. So there's some there, though that's not the side that's affected. Um, and what that's going to let me do is lift this up, because now I, where I want to get the sandpaper is underneath here. Okay, so I want to put the sandpaper underneath here, hold this down, and I'm going to do that a couple of times. I also got to do it upside down because I don't know if the, you know, the corrosion, the wear, whatever it is, is on this piece or on that piece. And I might have a hard, I'm going to try to get this underneath. I should be able to lift, like actually if I press the button, it'll help me get it underneath there a little bit easier. And I'm going to hold it down. So I've gone back in there with the sandpaper. Again, doing both sides, the underside of this and the top side of this piece. I actually went in there and just kind of scratched out some corrosion I thought I saw. Um, I used my knife at one point trying to get some of it out. Um, the other thing that happened at one point actually was a little piece of the sandpaper got underneath here. So when I was done, I wanted to get rid of any debris that might get stuck in there. So now I got um, this hooked up via the black lead and the alligator clip to here. And it looks like it's working. So resting to here, 0 0.003, 0 0.002. So that should be good. Um, there's a bit of a problem. So I can just pop this back into place. Again, as I cleaned it up, I was careful not to bend it out of shape, that's for sure. So I can slide that back in, but you got to imagine as soon as I start pressing buttons, this thing is moving like crazy. Look at that. So it moves and it might stay up, okay? Because those two things I drilled out were holding it in place. So I thought about using a glue gun, but I thought that there's a certain rubbery consistency to that, and, and I wasn't sure that it would hold it in place. So I came up with either an elegant or an inelegant solution, depending on how you think about it. And I figured out I could use what solves every problem in the world, and that's Lego. And what I did is I took two pieces, one by sixes, if you're familiar with uh, Lego lingo, Lego lingo, putting them together. And then, and again, they don't have to be orange. I don't have to say that, right? So then I'm going to put these in here. And what will happen is you say, well, that doesn't solve the problem. But what's going to happen is the batteries are going to be in here, right? And so now with the batteries there, when I press, it doesn't move. And it's working as it should be. Put it underneath there. So I'm about to put my uh, skills to the test here. I made more or less this car. I just have uh, three spinning wheels here. This is where it's geared up. Uh, I had to put the dude in. He's just kind of sitting there. His head's about the only thing keeping him from sliding all over the place. Um, so I have it hooked up. I haven't tried it yet. I'm about to. I'm taking this seriously. I went to the trouble of washing off the tires to give me uh, increased grip. And, um, you know, as a middle-aged man playing with a toy 
intended for eight-year-olds. My manliness is on the line here, so let's give it a test, see if it works. All right, so here goes nothing. Yeah. Wow. That actually works. Wow. I've proved myself. All right, so let's keep seeing how this goes. Look at that thing. Oh, doesn't have too long of a tether. Oh, jeez. All right, so we've got some dire circumstances. The guy fell down into a mm, valley and his lifeline. Is a construct tower, so we're gonna have to see if it will actually be able to save him. Let's see what happens. Uh, I guess we'll go the other way. Okay, so let me line it up. Oh my god, it just might work. <laughs> it's like that one video of the woman spinning like crazy. But she's coming up. Oh, it's gonna make it. Gotta get ready to shut it off. Oh, <laughs> just blew the pulley. <laughs> so, he's okay. Pulley popped off. But whoa, saved. Another thing that's kind of cool about this is we already know that the wire is one way to hook it up. But if you look in the direction and it shows you there's the battery box, there's the cable, there's the motor box, there's a different way to do it. They call it touch control. And uh, that way you don't have to have a cable if it's just gonna get in the way. So you're gonna remove the cable because you do not need the cable. And what you're going to do is you're going to have this motor so that uh, it's facing you, the um, whatever the heck that is, is facing you. And the battery box is going to be like this. So you can see this side is here. And what you see here now are slots where this will fit in. Okay. And you obviously put them in kind of on the low part. And then you push up. And now, if it's still working, to take it off, you do the opposite. You push down. And the way that it works is uh, these touch those. And that's how the power gets through. So that's kind of neat. You're going to see there might be ways, times that you want to walk, walk along behind it. But in this one, it's actually, you can just turn it on and let it go. And it kind of goes, you know, by itself without you having to walk around with that behind it. If you have thoughts, comments, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching.